Welcome to worship with First Christian Church in Black Mountain, North Carolina. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we pray that you will be blessed as we worship together. Today we're celebrating Earth Sunday and thinking about our connections throughout the natural world and our roles in caring for God's creation. I'm standing along our prayer walk down by the creek at the edge of our church property. We have a beautiful piece of God's creation and we are in the beautiful spring season with new life all around us. These are God's good gifts. Let us rejoice and be glad in them. Let us join in worship. The earth and everything on it, around it, in it, and beyond it belongs to God. In God's goodness, we have been given the pleasure and the responsibility for the earth's care. So let's celebrate creation. Let's celebrate the bees and the trees and the baby bears. Let's celebrate berries and squirrels, mountain peaks and each other. And let's celebrate God together. God of creation, all of the world proclaims your praise from the highest heavens to the deepest recesses of the sea. Make our voices true and faithful as we join the voices of all of creation to sing your praise. Amen. God of Zion, to you even silence is praise. Promises made to you are kept. You listen to prayer, and all living things come to you. When wrongdoings become too much for me, you forgive our sins. How happy is the one you choose to bring close, the one who lives in your courtyards. We are filled full by the goodness of your house, by the holiness of your temple. In righteousness, you answer us by your awesome deeds. God of our salvation, you are who are the security of all the far edges of the earth, even the distant seas. You establish the mountains by your strength. You are dressed in raw power. You calm the roaring seas, calm the roaring waves, 
calm the noise of the nations. Those who dwell on the far edges stand in awe of your acts. You make the gateways of morning and evening sing for joy. You visit the earth and make it abundant, enriching it greatly by God's stream full of water. You provide people with grain because that is what you've decided. Drenching the earth's furrows, leveling its ridges, you soften it with rain showers, you bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness, your paths overflow with rich food. Even the desert pastures drip with it, and the hills are dressed with pure joy. The meadowlands are covered with flocks, the valleys decked out in grain, they shout for joy, they break out in song. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God of welcome and wonder, you are the creator who has brought all life into being. You are the redeemer who has renewed all of creation and you are the sustainer who brings all of us together. Thank you for this opportunity to reflect on your creation, your covenant with all living things and our obligation to be good stewards of the gifts you have given. Help us to understand that each of us has an important role in caring for creation by the choices we make and by the actions we take. Give us the wisdom to choose thoughtfully and to act with care in accordance with your will and your love for this good earth. Gracious God, we pray for our neighbors who are in need. Help us care for them, for those who are alone, for those who are sick or recovering from illness or surgery, for those who lack the resources to care for their family, for those who want nothing more than a word of welcome, and for those who need the gospel to sustain them for the coming week. You called us to be your witnesses to all the world. Be with us as we participate in ministries of healing and hope through this church, in our community, region, nation, and world. Give us courage and strength to be your disciples in all the circumstances of our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
This week marks the 51st anniversary of Earth Day on April 22nd. We recognize our calling as stewards means we are caretakers of the creation God has provided. From Genesis right through the rest of the Bible and on to today, people of faith recognize God's good gifts include Earth's land, air, and water on which our lives depend. In this Easter season, we continue to rejoice in the new life of the resurrected Jesus. Today, we pray for our own lives to be raised up and inspired to the point that we might become witnesses to God's love made known in Jesus. As we receive our morning offering, which allows our congregation to thrive, may we also dedicate ourselves to take actions of restoration and resurrection for our earth. Let us pray. Creating God, we thank you for the creation which you freely give to us. In gratitude for your gifts, we respond with our desire to be faithful stewards, caring for your creation. Please receive these gifts and help us use them for the ongoing life of this congregation as witnesses to your desire for full and abundant life on earth. Amen. We believe that God breathed life into the world and declared that it was all good. From the azaleas beginning to bloom in our prayer garden along Camp Branch Creek and the creek itself, to the bees and monarch butterflies who will stop for refreshment and nourishment in our pollinator garden. We believe that God expects us to both enjoy and oversee this creation, to use it wisely, for our benefit and for that of our neighbor, and to ensure that it will continue to reflect God's creativity for generations to come. We believe that through Christ, all things are redeemed and will be made new, our own sinful selves as well as the world around us. We believe that every blade of grass and every drop of rain are miracles that testify to the work of the Holy Spirit. By living responsibly, 
We express our gratitude for the blessings of nature in which we live, work, play, and worship. Thanks be to God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Maybe it's because we have a wedding coming up in our family in two weeks. Our daughter Rachel is marrying Paul at Christmount on May 1st. But I was thinking the other day about the phrase, those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. Those are traditional words often spoken at the wedding ceremony. They are affirming words about two people being united in marriage. But in a broader sense, those words can apply to much more than a wedding. What God has joined together, let no one separate. What else has God joined together? How about you and me, everyone listening to this sermon, your neighbors next door and down the street and across the river and through the woods. God has joined us all together and we are bound to one another in the bond of God's love, a love that we are called to nurture and strengthen as we strive to love God with all that we are and all that we have and love our neighbors as ourselves. We belong to one another and we need each other. What God has joined together, let no one separate. We are human neighbors of one another and we need to stick together. But we can broaden the concept even further. Have you ever thought of the earth and the natural world as your neighbor? And in the same spirit that we are called to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, do we appreciate the earth as something we are bound to? On this Earth Sunday, let's think about this. We are neighbors with the whole of creation. We are united in love with the expanse of God's handiwork the rivers and lakes and streams, the plants and flowers and trees, the birds and insects and animals, the soil and grass and rocks at our feet, the air around us and the air in our lungs, God has joined us all together. We're neighbors and we belong to each other. That puts a whole new spin on those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. Our faith tells us that we are connected with each other, with God, and with God's creation. And this sacred connection starts to happen when we realize that the earth, our home planet, and all its inhabitants is our most vital neighbor. It's a sacred relationship that we all share, and it's a relationship from which no one is to be permitted to separate. And our place in this sacred relationship is to be good stewards of the earth. It is our spiritual mandate. We who are made in the image of God at the beginning of all things are given the mandate to care for the earth and everyone and everything in it. Taking care of creation doesn't mean that we exploit creation or that we manipulate it for our own purposes. No, it means that we love and care for this world the way God loves and cares for us. Rabbi Melanie Aaron sums up the creation story in Genesis 1 when she says, God said to Adam, this is the last world I shall make. Hold it in your hands. I place it in trust. 
Psalm 65, which we read this morning, offers a song of praise for our amazing world, a world that provides us with everything we need. We are 60, 93 million miles from the sun, which is exactly the right distance to give us the solar energy and light that provides for all living things. We have air with just the right amount of oxygen for all plants and animals. We have a water cycle that moves water from the sky to soil to rivers and back to the sky. We have an incredible biodiversity of life from bacteria to blue whales. And we human beings, God's assigned caretakers, we have reason and skill to protect and preserve this amazing world. And yet we are not preserving and protecting this world at least not in the way that we should. And thus we are not fulfilling our role in God's eternal purpose. At the beginning of this service, Sandra called us to worship with a paraphrase of the first line of Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. This affirmation expresses the theological understanding of our life on this planet. Everything is God's first, and we, all humans, animals, plants, natural resources, are part of the all that's in it. That's our connection and our mandate. In the 12th chapter of Luke's Gospel, Jesus tells a simple parable about a rich man who is a very successful farmer and is bringing in large harvests. The man decided to build bigger barns to store everything he's producing and says to himself, I have stored up plenty of goods, enough for several years. I'm going to take it easy now, eat, drink, and enjoy life. But then, Jesus says, God says to him, You fool, tonight you will die. Now who will get everything you've accumulated? What good will all that do you? And then Jesus goes on to give a lesson not about farmers and barns, but about nature. Therefore, Jesus says, I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will wear. There is more to life than food and more to the body than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither plant nor harvest. They have no silo or barn, yet God feeds them. Notice how the lilies grow. They don't wear themselves out with work. They don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon in all his splendor wasn't dressed like one of these. Jesus shows two views of life. In one, the person accumulates for himself. In the other, Jesus describes life in an interconnected world where there is enough for everyone. Your life, Jesus is saying, is part of God's great economy in which all of life is held in God's love and there is enough for everyone. There are enough resources, enough food for everyone, but only if we take our place in God's economy and not just our own. Everything is connected. Everything, including you and me, is made of elements and molecules that were unleashed in the Big Bang. You might say that we are all made of the same stardust. And that makes us cousins and neighbors. 
to a farmer in South Sudan trying to grow a few crops in the midst of a drought. It also makes us cousins to a polar bear struggling to stay alive in the Arctic. Science and faith tell us of our commonalities and our connections. By contrast, our politics, economics, and yes, sometimes even our religion teaches us to act, ask, what's in this for me? What will make me happy? We are taught to be consumers above all. So what do we do? How do we look out for all that God has joined together? Well, ultimately, many of the answers will have to be technological, finding new sustainable ways to generate energy, regenerative and sustainable ways of growing food, and laws which encourage these kinds of solutions. But we have work to do as well, as daunting as that task seems. We might begin by seeing ourselves as a part of God's world. We can see our health and well being in relationship to all that exists. Clean water and air are spiritual issues. God so loved the world, Jesus said. We have to learn to do the same. As a faith community, we can help each other see through the consumerism and individualism that society teaches and that leaves us more anxious and lonely. We need to stay connected to nature. Through walks in the park or hikes in the mountains or just spending a few minutes by the creek here in our prayer garden. We can evaluate our own lifestyle, the choices we make and what we drive, what we eat, how we live. We can make choices to be less of a burden on the earth. And we can support leaders who are committed to addressing climate change and creating sustainable communities. We can advocate for our fellow creatures, whether human or not, whose lives are endangered due to climate crisis. It is really a spiritual question for each of us. Will we choose to respond to the needs of our neighbors, all our neighbors, with compassion and concern? Will we do what we can to look after the world which God loves and look after everything in it? Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. That night in the upper room, the night that Jesus would be betrayed by one of his friends, was also the setting and occasion for Jesus to teach his disciples about their connection and relationship with each other. At that meal, Jesus gave his followers a new commandment, love each other just as I have loved you. And then he demonstrated what that love looked like in practical terms by stooping down and washing their feet. The meal became a tangible reminder of their connection to Jesus and to one another and all that Jesus had taught them. Today, this bread and juice, food produced from nature, is our reminder of our connection to Jesus, to each other, and to the whole world. These are God's gifts for all of God's people.
supper, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this bread represents my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, and after blessing it, he poured it and gave it to them, saying, This cup represents the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood and poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Generously giving God, without waiting for us to ask or demanding our thanks in return, you have provided for our physical well-being in abundance. From your generosity and goodness, you have bestowed the gifts of creation, the changing seasons, the bounty of nature, the freshening rains, the energizing sun, the careful balance of the elements, the beauty of the sunrise and the sunset and the amazing order of our very own bodies. Not only do we take such gifts for granted, too often we've been guilty of neglecting and abusing them, denying the stewardship we were created by you to exercise. So here at this table, where we are stewards of the mysteries of your gifts of redemption, we come seeking both forgiveness and restoration. In blessing this bread and wine, we seek the healing of everything our sin has broken. Heal the divisions in our relationships with you, in our relationship with others, in our relationships with each other, and in our relationship with all of creation. Send your Holy Spirit and so renew the face of the earth together with us. We pray. Amen.
As often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we remember the Lord's life, death, and resurrection and proclaim his ongoing presence with us. And now may God, who has made all things bright and beautiful, make your way to be bright and beautiful and give you peace now and forever. Amen.